Hey everybody and thanks for tuning in to another video. So one of my past videos was using hand warmers to vacuum seal canning jars and I had seen some gentlemen on YouTube doing this with a PVC vacuum chamber so I decided to give it a shot. So this video is me building it and then some thoughts on this method when compared to other methods at the end so stay tuned to the end to hear those thoughts. Thanks a lot. Not sure if you know this or not, but there's actually another great website for videos that doesn't deal with a lot of the censorship that you deal with on YouTube. If you're interested, and it's a favor to me, please go over to odyssey.com and subscribe to my channel there as well. Uh, you'll find the link in the description below. Thanks. So this is just standard 6 inch PVC pipe. What you're going to do here is mark out the top of your canning jar so you have a good idea of the distance for that. Uh, that'll be your starting portion of your vacuum chamber. And then as a second step what you're going to do is add the distance for the adapter. That's just going to give you a little bit of working room inside the contraption when it's all said and done. Uh, make sure you're paying attention to which mark you're cutting on because if it's too short, it'll probably still work, but it might be a little bit more difficult to manage things in, inside. So the next step is we're gonna saw through that. Uh, this is really short, just to give you the idea of sawing, but I bent, the, I bent the hell out of that old saw blade that I had on there, so you guys missed out on getting to watch that. So this next step is going to be going through and sealing the bottom of the container. Uh, as you can see here, I used primer as well as glue since there's no fluid going through this and the seal just needs to be okay. You could probably get away with just using glue if you wanted to save a little bit of money. I just had the, the whole kit laying around so I ended up just priming and sealing both ends. Uh, something you won't see here is that it looks like I just primed and sealed the bottom portion of the container. I did end up going back through later and priming and sealing the adapter fitting as well. Um, it was not a super airtight container. It was tight enough to get the job done, but by resealing that, as well as adding some Teflon tape to the threads of the screw-in adapter, or I should say the screw-in plug, that drastically helped the amount of pumping that needed to be done with the brake vacuum feeder. So I would highly recommend sealing both ends. Also, another safety tip, always wear, always wear gloves when you're working with uh, primer and glue for plumbing. That stuff will stain your skin for an extremely long amount of time. It does not come off easy. It, it's kind of embarrassing showing up places with purple hands. Just a little side note for everybody there. And this doesn't have to be beautiful or perfect, it's just to get the seal going, so no need to be uh, artistic with it. I also ended up holding this down for about 30 seconds just to make sure the seal was completed and the glue stayed in place. Yet again, nothing catastrophic, so you can just give it a good whack to make sure it's on there, it'll probably stay just fine. So that's the adapter and plug that you're going to utilize the uh, brake vacuum creator into. Uh, what we're going to do here is drill a hole. The vacuum pump came with a set of nozzles, so the nozzles just fits right into the hole you're going to create. Another side tip here is I created the hole but wasn't getting a perfect fit and it was just being real frustrating so I ended up hot gluing the actual hose fitting right into that hole and that provided much better, much better suction later on. So here you can see the contraption, the vacuum chamber already built and what you're going to do is you're going to place the lid on your canning jar, screw the ring down but not super tight. Uh, you're going to obviously want to create a little room for it to 
swing around as it pulls the air out of the container or the canning jar. So you'll screw that down. Like I said, Teflon tape will help you a little bit there as well. Insert your vacuum pump and go ahead and give that a few squeezes. Uh, basically, I found that the sweet spot was right above 20 PSI when all was said and done. Uh, once you're above that, you should be able to take the canning jar out of the vacuum chamber and you should be able to test it with the shake test. So you'll take the ring off and hold the actual lid of the canning jar and kind of give it a little bounce and it should stay sealed. If it comes unsealed, you know you don't have a good enough vacuum seal and you need to give it another shot. So as you see here, I'm going to just demonstrate that real quick. There you go. Seal stayed. You are good. So here's our completed product, uh, all sealed and ready to go after having done its first canning jar. Some final thoughts and some things to think about before you go ahead and work through this project. All told supplies and the vacuum pump came to about $85. I'm sure you can find the, the hand pump a little bit cheaper here or there, but you know that's only gonna change you probably about $10 all told. Uh, some of you might have the supplies laying around for PVC around the house, so you might also save a few dollars there. Setting it up like this, you're limited on which canning jars you can use. I found out some of the rounded jars worked fine. Some of the more angled cornered jars would not actually fit into the six inch PVC pipe uh, without some kind of modification to the interior side of the pipe, it means grinding out four corners for them to be able to sit down through. Uh, that was a little more work than I really wanted to put into this at this point. You can do smaller than quart jars in this container or in this vacuum chamber. Uh, There's quite a bit of pumping involved to get it done, but it does work. Uh, in the end, I think this is probably a more relevant project for something to do with your kids, maybe as a homeschooling project or something of that nature, maybe a science project for school, but probably not the most cost-effective way to go about vacuum sealing your items. Uh, right here, you will see a vacuum sealer you can buy to go along with your food saver. Uh, runs just a little bit over $40. Uh, you'd still need to purchase the hand vacuum pump unless you already own a food saver, but this would probably be a much more effective way to go about this. Smaller, easier to store. Uh, you're going to have both the jar lid sizes, so this is something that can be easily changed up. You won't have to pump forever for the smaller jars. I think if I was going to be doing a lot of dry vacuum canning, I would definitely go this route. As a final option, and something I also tried, is in the previous video I just used a hand warmer for vacuum sealing. And what it comes down to is for a container that's about 7 eighths of the way full, uh, one hand warmer tends to get the job done of sealing the container. So just for reference point, I got a box of hot hands off of Amazon. The box was $25. That came with 40 pair of hand warmers. So that's enough for 80 jars. So if you're looking for a limited amount of uses and you don't want something hanging around forever, that may be another way to go as well. As always, thank you everybody for watching. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.